So I've been rearranging my desk a little bit and uh, decided to put this screen right there because it's complementary to the other two screens next to it. Yeah, baby. This happened. I got three 20 inch cinema displays and I was offered a fourth 20 inch cinema display. Now, if you want to drive all that screen, you need you need some video cards to support it all. So in this video, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to be installing a second ATI Radeon X1900. We're also going to install a Bluetooth module so that I can finally use my Bluetooth keyboard. I was going to be using the Bluetooth mouse, but unfortunately the integrated antenna on the Mac Pro sucks. It's mounted in the back and the mouse just doesn't like it. I mean it works, but but it just doesn't like it. So let's um, fast forward a little bit or go backwards a little bit to where this all began. Oh, and one more thing. In order to get this gigan gigantic CPU to fit under my desk, I had to extend the shelf a little bit. So I built this um, shelf extender so that it can all fit in there. Future modifications for the too long, didn't read, didn't watch, don't want to watch uh, crowd. I'm going to be um, looking at a 32 gigabyte RAM expansion <coughs> in addition to the 8 core modification. That's two quad core Xeons and it can be done. And it can be done for about 240 bucks or so, all inclusive. It's a lot of money to spend on a 10 year old computer, but I could have a lot of fun with that. So, let's go. So I was thinking to myself, what else could I add to this machine before I start having to spend money on it? And by that, of course, we're talking about the, the Mac Pro. First generation Mac Pro. And I got to thinking, you know, I don't have enough screen real estate. So let's do something about it. So, a couple of things I grabbed uh, from my scrap bin at work. I've got another 20 inch cinema display. I've also got another ATI Radeon 16 lane uh, graphics card, yeah, graphics card with the power cable. I pulled this from one of the parts machines I had. And yes, it works. <laughs> Now there's like 28 lanes available on these machines. And uh, we have a few options here. Um, you can actually have two 16 lane uh, graphics cards in the same machine. But you're going to have to change the um, bandwidth to each card down to like eight. So, ah, this thing's heavy. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, we're gonna just do that. I'm going to lay it down first. Boy, is this machine heavy. We're going to make it even heavier. If you watch. So, a couple of plans I have in the future. As a matter of fact, very soon. I'm going to bump this up to 32 gigs of RAM. <laughs> I mean, I can do it. It's only going to cost me about 100 and... 150. $130 or so. And that's using the proper double heat sink memory modules that Apple has uh, approved for these machines. So first we're going to do a RAM upgrade. And then later on down the road I'm thinking hmm, maybe I could also do the quad core uh, sorry the 8 core the octo core modification that is so popular with these machines. That's what I'm thinking. So we're going to probably do that. Well, why not? I mean, I can get I can get the uh, Xeon processors pretty cheaply now that they're pretty much obsolete. So figure 
Why the hell not, right? So I think I have to put it in the last two slots. So let's do just that. <laughs> I feel like, man, um, yeah. So the first slot is a double wide, and that was intended for the uh, factory optional graphics. And that's what we have in there. Now there should be a plug in there somewhere for this card. Let me get that plugged in first. So basically, you've got this power cable, and I'm going to need some light. Position my camera in there. <clears throat> so down inside there, you can see where the existing power cable goes, and right next to it is a num is another one. And that's where we need to plug in the second power cable. And that we shall do. It always pays to have a parts machine kicking around to just pull things like this out of, so I don't have to go out and spend my hard-earned money on these things. I mean, let's face it, this machine, I was, by the way, I was corrected, it will take 10.7, but nothing newer. Uh, not by default. Um, you'll have to do some clever hacking to get it to work on anything newer than 10.7. But that's okay, because for the time being, I don't plan on going any higher than 10.6.8. For good reason. I want native uh, support for um, Rosetta applications. I can't get that with any other operating system, unless I go back in time and bring it down to like 10.5. Now, alternatively, I could actually have enough hard disk real estate to um, set up, you know, a dual or quad boot system, which I might do. I've been, I've been thinking about that as well. There we go. Let's get this card in there. It's easier said than done. Jesus. Um, turns out, I'm having a hell of a time getting this in there. It turns out the system locking mechanism is blocking me from putting in this full-length card. It's like um, a logistical nightmare. I can't seem to get it in there. I'll have to figure something out here. Well, I managed to get him in there. Um... I don't know if this configuration is supported, but we're going to find out, won't we? So you might be asking yourself, well, why are you doing two graphics cards when you just want two monitors? Ah, that's where you're wrong. I want three monitors. I've got a third cinema display on the way. Let's see if it even starts. Well, it chimed. Now it's supposed to ask me at some point how I want the cards configured. And I'm going to tell it exactly how. Let's see. I might have to run the, um, the PCI Express Utility. Both cards are running side by side. Whether they're putting out any image or not, I don't know. We'll find out in a minute, won't we? Alright. Okay, here we go. The expansion slot utility is launched because the system is detected to install these ad cards. Okay. We're going to do PCI 8. PCI Express 8 lane. Um, we're going to do this one here. 2 8x, 2 4x. So this is going to cut slots 1 and 2 down to 8 lanes. And the other two are going to be cut down to 4 lanes. Now, we have a total of... Let's make sure I got this right. I don't know if this configuration that I have is supported. It's, it shows a total of 4 slots. You can hear the fans working simultaneously. One, two, 
So it's actually in slot number three, slot number two. Okay. Yeah, that would be slot two because slot three is buried by that heat sink. It's a double wide card. So it should be down in slot two. I just want to verify just to be safe. But I can't see the slot numbers. Yeah, it should be okay. Yeah, because there's nothing under this heat sink. It's a double wide slot. So slot two would be what we're looking at. And then three and four. Yeah, that's right. Just want to make sure. I don't want to screw this up. You know what I'm saying? I just can't see down in there. But yeah, slot three should be vacant. I can't actually see it. Okay, quick look in the system profiler reveals that we have both ATI radions available, installed, and running, and they are running at X8, so eight lanes. And we're going to be hooking up the second display to the second card just to verify that it works. Well, I've got my third monitor finally. This came in today. So, um, I haven't hooked it up yet, but I'm getting some stuff worked around and I worked, worked around, uh, arranged. And a couple of things came up. Number one, I need to extend this uh, CPU shelf to accommodate the massiveness <laughs> that is the Intel Xeon Mac Pro. But I'm also going to be adding da -da -da, Bluetooth. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be adding Bluetooth. I um, went through my scrap pile and I found a Bluetooth adapter. I actually pulled that from a, um, a dead 20-inch iMac. One of the white 20-inch Intel iMacs. And uh, so that's, that's going to that's gonna happen. But first, we need to shut her down. So here's the board that I bought at Lowe's. They even cut it for me. 22 inches long. And that will extend the shelf out enough. And verify they got the measurement right. And it's uh, 22 inches long. I wanted one that was nine and a half inches or nine and three quarters wide, uh, but all they had were 11 inch boards. And um, <clears throat> I mean, physically 11 inch. A little bit about wood. If you don't buy a lot of lumber, they actually sell the wood. It's about an inch narrower than it should be. That's normal practice. So an 11 inch board or a 12 inch board is really 11 inches wide and a, nine, a 10 inch board is really 9 inches wide. In this case it's 9 and a quarter. And I don't own a table saw so I can't rip the board down. So I can't buy a 12 inch board and rip it down to the nine and a three quarters that I wanted because um, I don't own a table saw. But this will work. I got one that was as straight as I could get it. It's a little bit curved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dress the board uh, with my sander. I'm going to smoothen out the edges and uh, we're going to give it a paint job. It's going to be painted flat black. So. And I'm going to cut a small little face so that it has a nice, uh, a nice front edge. So, so once again, the uh, Mac Pro is on the surgical bench. Uh, a minute ago, well, a minute ago, yesterday, we installed a second video card successfully. Now we're going to upgrade it to a Bluetooth model. Woohoo! Open up the uh, hatch. This cover weighs more than a MacBook Air. <laughs> Just that cover alone. All right. Now it's easier to pull out the number two drive. I didn't point this out in any previous videos, but if the uh, chassis lock is engaged, it also locks all four drive bays. I'm going to 
pull out the number two drive. I'm also going to pull out our fair video cards. They have to be removed for this upgrade as well. In fact, this won't be the last time. Because when I go ahead and do my, if I ever do, the 8 core mod, I'm going to have to do this as well. Something I've uh, honestly considered. Now, one of the things I want to point out is when you're doing major upgrades to an older system like this, it really does help to do them one at a time. So in one upgrade, you might add another video card. In another upgrade, you might add some other piece of hardware. The reason I recommend that is because when you're dealing with older hardware, the flakiness factor does increase. Um, the sad reality is, you know, we're dealing with old equipment. And the failure rate increases of a lot of these components as they age. So when you start adding all sorts of upgrades and modifications at once, you could wind up in a situation where you have to start doing troubleshooting. Um, and it could take some time. I mean, based on the complexity and... Oh, fuck. I just broke the tab off of that slot. And it wasn't even the right slot. Boy, do I feel stupid. Anyway. I'm going to just brush this away. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pull it out completely. I don't even need to. But I just broke a, a tab off one of my... It's not a big deal. That slot is uh, it's hidden anyway. It'll never get used. But the fragility of these parts is definitely prevalent. Uh, but I was being stupid. Okay. And that tab is only relevant if I'm putting in a full 16 lane card, which, let's be honest, will never happen. Not on that card. Not anytime soon. So this is what our Bluetooth module looks like. Pretty simple. I just hope I, I grab the right one. Well, I didn't grab the actual one, but it'll work. I'm pretty sure it'll work. Try that again. It just sort of drops uh, right in there. Oh yeah, that'll work. That's perfect. It's got you know two lining, two of those um, uh, mounting bosses line up, so we're good. I feel bad about breaking that that locking lever off, but again, it's no biggie. I thought I brought my toolkit up. I guess I didn't. Let me go get that. So I just tossed in the two mounting screws. There's our Bluetooth module, all happy. Um, the actual Bluetooth antenna wire is buried way down in there, so let's see if we can't get it out. Oh wait, is that it right there? Oh yeah, that's it right there. It wasn't the one I thought it was. It actually says BT right on it. How convenient is that? No, oh, really, how convenient is that? Oh, I guess it's not what I thought it was. Let's see that light again. No, no, it's not what I thought it would be. It says, I saw that little flag, it said BT. I thought maybe that was Bluetooth. Um, yeah, I've got one antenna lead, but it's not going to reach. Uh, it's right here. I don't think that's for Bluetooth. Actually, I think that was for draft in. So I'm going to take the number one drive out as well. I should have done that before. Come on. Ow! Damn! I don't know 
don't know why that it kind of like pinched me, you know. What do we got down there? HDD one. Oh, that must be the um, temperature sensors for the hard drives. saw something labeled BT. I thought maybe that was for the Bluetooth antenna. There's a lot of stuff down there, you know? A lot of stuff. Alright. Yeah, I'm pretty sure number two was Bluetooth. Let me look that up real quick. Found the little son of a bitch. It was buried under the logic board. I could just, if it was moved out under there any further, I wouldn't have been able to get it. Um, but it's there. And it actually comes allegedly from the rear of the case. From back here somewhere. But that does not seem to be the case. Alright, so I've got the antenna wire unburied. Alright. Sorry, you can't really see this, but I'm going to be plugging the antenna lead directly to the Bluetooth module. I have no light to work with, so I'm going to put the camera down and do that. And there we are, installed. All right. Now, let's talk about hard drives. Now, I, um, I had mentioned at some point my distaste for the Western Digital Green Drives of which I have one. I'm trying to find it here. I think it's this one. There it is. The green drives suck. They are great for low power, um, but let's be honest here. Um, this thing probably draws about 500 watts without the three monitors. So, um, <laughs> I'm not that concerned about saving the planet, apparently. Um, the green drives are double speed, they're dual speed, so they actually run at two different spindle RPMs and when they're not being accessed they spin down to like, I don't know, 5200 RPM I think it is. They slow down and then when they spin up, allegedly, they uh, they spin up to their full 5400 RPM speed, based on what I've read about them. I mean, is it really necessary for a drive to do that? I mean, what I find is that they tend to spin down completely, and at the worst times. And I just don't like them. They're unreliable. I've, I've had a lot of those actually fail. The, of all the drives I've seen fail, between the Western Digital Blues and Greens, I think it's pretty much a fair fair shot between the two. Um, you know, they just they're just not my favorite drive to work with. But that's what I've got. But I'm not going to stick with it. It's going to be taken out. As of today, I went on eBay and for very very little money, I found another um, OEM Apple Seagate. Barracuda. And those are a damn good drive. I've never had one go bad on me. Um, not the Barracudas. The Barracudas are a good drive. They're a 7200 RPM. They're fast. They're reliable. But most importantly, used, they're cheap. Real cheap. So, um, I know that most people wouldn't put you know, uh, a 10-year-old, or, this, yeah, the drive will be about 10 years old. Most people wouldn't put a 10-year-old hard drive in a computer. Um, I'm one of those guys who say, why not? Why not? Um, I guess for a little more money, I probably could have bought something a little newer, a little bigger. But I, I find that the Barracudas are a great drive. Um, and for 25 bucks, why not? That's what I paid, by the way. I don't think I stated that earlier. $25 is what I paid for the drive. But that's not bad, considering I paid nothing 
so far. So far, everything you see here, all these parts, all of these monitors, everything is surplus scrap. Stuff that was going to be thrown away anyway. I just thought I'd point that out. Now let's talk about original retail price stuff because it's actually getting it's getting up there. The original MSRP of all this equipment. This computer was about twenty five hundred dollars when it was new. Each of these cinema displays was, I believe, fifteen hundred bucks each one. So <laughs> you're looking at about four thousand dollars in monitors right there. Uh, for that, yeah, four thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, about roughly four thousand, sixty-five hundred, and that's assuming a bare bones, one gigabyte machine. That's what this retailed for, and that was without the upgraded video card. This optional video card added three hundred and fifty dollars to the machine's original MSRP. The seven hundred and fifty gig hard drives. Um, added considerably to the MSRP. Um, they were stricken with just one gigabyte of RAM each. Was it one or two? It might have been two. Yeah, it was two gigs each. So, you know, there's that. Um, so, so, two gigs was a lot of memory back in those days, too. Yeah, You know, so the 750 uh, gig drive, the base drive on these was um, 250. So 250 gigs was the base drive. But because these were being used originally with Final Cut Pro, they were ordered with bigger drives. They were ordered with the better video card. We're going to make sure that there's no antenna wires or anything sitting on top of that. Okay, good. Basically, you're dealing with, <laughs> you're talking a lot of money here. Um, and the cinema display, again, that was about $1,500, $1,600 a piece. And I've got three of them. Now, I've got an opportunity to get a fourth one. But, you know, having four monitors here is probably too, too many. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm probably not going to go ahead and do that. But I'm offered one, so I'm going to take it. And uh, if I can figure out a way to set it up that makes sense, then I'll do that. You know, why, why the hell not, right? Why not? You only live once. YOLO. All right. So, I don't really use that word. I'm not, 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 a, I'm not a YOLO kind of guy, you know. Here I am spending an effort and money and time on a 10-year-old computer. Wait till you see what she can do. Boy, oh boy. Um, when I get the uh, 32 gigabyte of RAM upgrade, which is that, I'm, that's, that's going to happen. Um, and I will pay for that. I, I, don't, I have no, no problems with, with doing that. But 32 gigs of RAM is going to really make this thing scream. And once I do that, I'll consider the 8 core upgrade. I'm going to consider it. It's not a done deal yet, but I'm going to consider it. A uh, little known fact, if you want your aluminum max to shine up real nice, Lemon Pledge. Well, in this case, the generic equivalent works real well. It shines the aluminum up like the day it was born. Look at that. Probably can't really see it, but nice shine. I just happen to have the can sitting there, so I thought I'd point that out. But you can make these aluminum cases look real beautiful. Just a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, silicone wood cleaner. Well, it's not wood cleaner. It's um, yeah, silicone in a can. That's what it is. <laughs> and here is the uh, stand that I'm, or the extended shelf that I made. The idea is that this is going to be able to slide in and out. And. Oh, I guess you didn't see that. Really bad lighting, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, this is going to slide in and out of the opening here. So.
so to conclude this video, I'm going to answer the question that everyone wants the answer to. How much energy does this machine consume? That's 320-inch cinema displays and the bare system by itself. Um, it is currently drawing 6.3 watts. Okay, we're going to now see that number spike. I'm going to position the flashlight so we can see it. Now if I turn the... Uh, now that's, that's 6.3 watts draw, That's with nothing on. Um, that is just standby power. Um, or the parasitic drain. It just it draws about as much as a night light uh, in your kid's bedroom, just sitting there doing nothing. Okay. Let's see if I can get that to show. 6.3 watts. Now now we're gonna fire it up. It's gonna turn on three monitors, four hard disk drives, two graphics cards, four cores. <laughs> <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. You can find the damn button. Where the hell is it? Really? Alright, there it is. Okay, it just jumped to 372 watts. Now the displays aren't even on yet. We're now up to 418, and I have run, one running display. All right. That's almost as much as my plasma TV so far. Any minute now, we're going to see the spike. What about now? 465 watts. 488, 452, 460. We're fluctuating quite a bit. We have three lit displays. It's actually not that bad. Um, considering the machine by itself, I think, only draws about 300 watts. So that's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. Now, of course, there's nothing running. It's not really working very hard right now. Um, but it seems to be static at around 425 watts. Okay, so we're going to shut her down. i got to take this unit off. Oh, that just put it to sleep. In sleep mode. Uh, this is a good one to answer. What does it draw in sleep mode? It looks like it varies between 11 and 9 watts. Now this will also tell us a couple of other things. This is designed to calculate the actual cost of an electrical appliance based on whatever preset uh, um, watt hour reading you have. So maximum wattage was 488 and a half. That's what it drew at its peak. This tells us the kilowatt hours. Let's, uh, let's see what that. No, that's actually um, an ongoing mirror. That's not like a. Yeah, okay. That's how you figure out what your power bill is going to be. Now, this one is power factor. But we really. I just wanted to see what the wattage draw was. So we're looking at about five 100 watt light bulbs at the most. So. Just to visualize it, it's like leaving five uh, 100 watt uh, lamps running at the same time, all the time. So now that we have uh, more screen real estate than we know what to do with, uh, we're going to go ahead and launch a couple of virtual machines. Let's see how it uh, performs. So I have uh, two virtual machine VDI files that I've um, acquired. Well, one of them I made, the other one I downloaded. I actually managed to find a Windows 3.1 pre-made VDI, which is kind of cool. Uh, but let's spin up Windows XP. I'm going to create another VDI, possibly for uh, one or two flavors of Linux, just to play with them. You never have too many of those. 
And I got Windows 3.1 over here. We're starting them at the same time. Of course, it starts up in DOS, right? Okay, so that one's up. This one's almost there. This one has a lot more resources uh, dedicated to it. Put in the password. If anyone wants to know, the password is let me in. Um, although it's not capturing my keyboard. Why? Oh, there we go. It's being stupid. Come on. Maybe the keyboard's not working. It is Bluetooth, so maybe maybe there's some communications issues there. Oh yeah, now it's there. Oh. It's not liking that. Did this one? Oh, it's just being stupid. Come on, give me a blinking. I see. Uh, you know what it is? It's not updating the. Um, it's not refreshing the image. I'm gonna type it in right now and then watch this. Yeah, there it goes. So I'm not getting any real time. I'm not getting like a real time display refresh here. I'm not sure why. I'm also not getting accurate mouse movement in Windows 3.1, but this is an ongoing problem um, that may have to do with the uh, the mouse just isn't moving with the mouse. The cursor's not moving with the mouse. I didn't have any problems on the XP side until now. This is the first time I've ever had any issues. Let me um, decouple the mouse by hitting the host key, and I'm going to go over here. Yeah, that's not that's not normal. Maybe if I shut down 3.1, let's see. Let me just open up the app. Oh, I have it right in front of me. Ah. Uh, oh, you know what it is? I didn't have... Ah, I see why. No, huh? I'm thinking maybe it's because I didn't have the, the virtual machine um, set as an active. It's working better now. No, it's not. What the hell? Hey, I'll work on that. I think I just have um, a bit of a resource problem here. <laughs> I might have to do something about getting more RAM in this machine. For some reason, the Windows XP VDI is giving me a problem, and the Windows 3.1 VDI is, well, not so wonderful. i got to figure out why. So, anyway, definitely uh, recommend doing three monitors if you have the space and the monitors and the... Uh, graphics card to drive it all. Um, this is really making a liar out of me. I had Windows XP running perfectly fine, and then all of a sudden, it's giving me some problems. So I got to figure out what's going on there. And eventually, I'll figure out why the Windows 3.1 Virtual Box isn't really um, doing so hot. Virtual machine. So yeah, that's how you turn a how hum old Mac Pro into a fucking powerhouse still need more power though still oh my furnace is running and it's like really nice outside i don't know i gotta turn the turn the thermostat off okay well thanks for watching um oh one more thing we can actually uh i want to show you this this is the um it's one of my favorite utilities this is My mind just went blank. Hmm. SMC Fan Control. It's an application that you can download for almost any any version of Mac OS. Um, I don't know what how far back it goes, but I know it goes from at least 10.6.8 to current. And this allows you to override the um, the system manager, it's the SMC, which controls the um, or the PMU, which controls the. Uh, a system fan and cooling settings and I just changed the setting to a custom setting that I made called liftoff which runs all the fans at maximum speed which is about 
2900 RPM each. Hear those fans cranking along? Yes. Now what's real fun is when you run this application on 10 rack mount X serves. Now an X serve in its normal state sounds like a jet engine all the time. But when you run SMC fan control on a stack of them concurrently, it gets really entertaining really fast. It's like there's so much airflow. I mean, you, the whole rack starts moving forward. I'm just kidding. That's not really what happens. But you get like, there's like, I think there's about eight or nine fans in an X-Serve. And, and they're the tiny ones, the little uh, double, double wide server fans. And they're, those mothers crank. So when you have, uh, and when you have an X-Serve, a couple of X-Serves running this application, cranking those fans at full speed, Ah, oh, it's, it's, it's so cool. But anyway, this already dropped the temperature of the system substantially, so um, I'm going to just put it back on default and just bring the fan speed down. It takes a while for them to ramp down to the normal speed, but eventually they'll get there. And i got to figure out why my XP box ain't doing so well. Let me, let me, let me shut down Windows 3.1. Let's just do that. Let's just shut her down. I'm going to have to close the window here and power off the machine. Maybe it just doesn't like running two virtual machines at once. Yeah, I'm still not having much luck here. Let's do, a Let's do a shutdown on this. Come on. Yeah, shut down. Shut down. Okay. Yeah, it's not running well. This is new. This hasn't been a problem before. I have um, one gig of RAM dedicated to it, and I've got no applications running, so there shouldn't be a problem. All right, let's power back up again. Seems to be... Oh, you know what? This all started when I switched to scale mode. Aha. Let's do something about that. Let's do something about that. Yeah, I switched it to a scaled um, I think I can change that. Where's the uh, menu? Let's see. Switch to full screen mode. So that Oh, there we go. That's why. Ha! <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what it was. I'll just move it over here. Unfortunately, it won't let me ambiguate all the way. And I, and I can't just resize it. See? So I'm going to have to... Um, yeah. All right, well, that sucks. But if I run it in scale mode... i got to clear that password out. Let's try that with Windows 3.1. Oh, wrong menu, asshole. Start it up. What I find is that the Windows 3.1 ver um, machine doesn't seem to have that mouse problem even before I did all this, so let's get it windowed and move it over here. I'm getting nice real-time input from my keyboard. When I capture the mouse, look at it, it's still doing it. It's still wacky and crappy and stuff. Um, I wonder if I can change the resolution, maybe make the screen a little bigger. Jesus, it's like all over the place. And I even slowed down the mouse speed because it was it was so messed up. Oh, I have to go into do, 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 do. where the hell is it? Yeah, it's not a control panel, it's in Windows setup. Ah, come on now. Options. Change system settings. We're gonna switch this to SVGA. See if it lets me do it. If not, I can always reset the damn thing. 
No, there we go. 1024 by 768, 256. Let's see what happens. Uh, retry. Uh, cancel. All right, well, that just blows. Oh, I might have to figure something out with that. But anyway, I just thought I'd share with you some some cool stuff here. Thank you for watching. There will be more. I am planning on doing, again, 32 gigs of RAM and possibly even... Uh, I might even um, put in the 8-core kit. You know what really sucks is I'm going to be discarding or recycling or scrapping, however you want to put it, a stack of those aforementioned X serves. And some of them are, in fact, 8-core machines. They're 8-core Xeons, but the CPUs that are in those X serves are not compatible with the Mac Pro, at least this generation Mac Pro. I believe that the next generation will work. The other thing is, they're stacked full to the gills with RAM, but it's not the double heatsink RAM that the Mac Pro requires. Kind of blows. Um... So I, can't, I don't know, I'll have to take a look at them and see what's actually in them. I might give it a try. Maybe it works, maybe it don't. At least I tried. <laughs>